Hi guys, I'm Phil Sturpey. In this video I'm going to show you how easy it is to work with S3 using the AWS Toolkit in Eclipse. In an earlier video I showed you how to install the Toolkit into Eclipse and associate it with a particular user. In fact if I just pop into the menu here and go into Preferences, we can see that we've already configured Eclipse to identify itself as a user called Frank with a particular pair of access key and secret key with AWS. Inside the AWS Explorer window in Eclipse, you can see a variety of different services that you can work with. And these are the services it's assumed that you might work with when you're within Eclipse. In this video, I want to focus on S3. So let me just pop that window open. Now the very fact that I can see some buckets already means that the user account that Eclipse is using has been authenticated by Amazon Web Services and has permission to view S3. In this video, I'm not going to look at how we develop code, rather I'm just going to focus on how we might interact as a developer with S3 within Eclipse. For example, the creation of buckets and the copying of files. Let me begin by creating a bucket. So I'll right click here, create a new bucket. And we're going to call this bucket Demo Bucket. And I have to be careful because this name needs to be globally unique. And as you can see, that bucket name is already in use. Let's try hyphen. No, that's also in use. Let's go for QA, demo bucket. Now we're fine. So that's a thing to remember. It's not just an Eclipse thing. It's not a, an AWS Toolkit thing. That's an Amazon thing. So buckets in S3 need to be globally unique. So I click Finish. I've created a bucket. So it may well be when you're developing in Eclipse that you do need a bucket. It's not worth writing the code to do so. I'll just create the bucket. Just a management task. So now I've created the bucket within Eclipse. Let's try something else that I might want to do. I might simply want to upload a couple of files into the bucket whilst I'm working away in Eclipse. Well, I could just do that via a drag and drop. If I bring up File Explorer or Windows Explorer, I can just grab a file, drag it over, drop it on the bucket, and the AWS Toolkit will do the rest for me. What it's asking me for now is a key name. Now I'm copying in a file, but S3 uses a mechanic of key names, and it could be the same as a file name, although it doesn't have to be. So I'll just accept that as a key name, click OK, and the file's now been uploaded. If I need to view or want to view that from within Eclipse, I can do so. I can just right click the bucket name, open up the bucket editor, and there we can see the item in the bucket. We see the key name, we can see the owner. Now interestingly, although I'm connecting as a user called Frank, and that's an I am user, it's actually showing here as the owner of the account, which is my name, Phil Sturpey, that's a root account. It's telling me here that we're using standard storage. There are a couple of flavors of S3. The standard is also reduced redundancy. That's not a thing I can control from here. Another thing I could do within the Explorer is select the key and then edit the bucket ACL or access control list. This is one way of managing permissions. So we could use access control list rather than IAM policies or resource based policies. I'm not going to use the ACL at this point. So strictly speaking out of the box, no one should be able to access that file in S3 unless it was the root account. Let me just jump into the AWS console for a minute to show you the file there. I'm in S3. If I go into QA Demo Bucket, we can see the file that I uploaded from within Eclipse. The reason I've come here is just so I can right click this and go for Properties and show you the URL that we could publish or maybe use to give users access to the file. Now that URL isn't available from within Eclipse. But if I copy that, and then open up a new incognito window. I'm doing this because I've already got another window open and I'm authenticated as Phil Sturpey. If I just pop in that URL, you'll see that we receive a message back telling us that access has been denied. So clearly there's a file up there. We've got that up there via Eclipse, but by default S3 prevents any access. Something we are able to do in Eclipse if I pick the file, I can generate a pre-signed URL. 
Let me select that. I can pick an expiry date. This is going to generate a pre-signed URL with an expiry date. I just have to choose expiry date. It's currently 11 o'clock. Maybe I could say I'm going to publish a URL that's going to expire in an hour's time. I'll just copy that to the clipboard. Go back into my incognito window, which is this one, and paste in that URL instead. As you can see, We've got the expiry time in there. We've also got an access key in there. We'll press enter. We've now retrieved the document. Now there's more that you can do with S3, but I'm just focusing on what you could do in S3 using the AWS Toolkit. And what we've been able to do with the AWS Toolkit, let me just close that down, is create a bucket, drag a file into the bucket, and if I could drag it in, I could easily delete it. I can select that and delete it. I've also shown how to create a signed URL to give users access to that file or to that key. As I said at the beginning of this video, I'm just focusing on the management tasks in the AWS Toolkit rather than what we can do from a development point of view using the SDK. That'd be material for another video. There you have it. In this video, I've shown you how easy it is to work with S3 using the AWS Toolkit in Eclipse. Thanks for watching. Please feel free to comment on my blog and my Facebook page, and perhaps you could suggest more video topics. Most of all, don't forget to subscribe to keep up with my videos as I release them. Bye for now.